Story 1. Background. Both now 64 my wife and I began dating as teenagers and we married at 21 in 1977. Both retired. Wife's affair was from 2004 to 2009. D-Day, March 2021 I began I see two weeks ago D-Day for me occurred last month when I found a very sexually explicit poem and other emails that my wife wrote to her boss in 2005. It confirmed a suspicion I had for years, but every time I confronted my wife, she denied everything. Now with undeniable proof, I confronted my wife and she confessed to having a five-year affair with her boss, a man. I can't comprehend my wife having a multi-year affair, especially during the exact same time when I was going through some serious health issues. I can't comprehend during those five years she had both a physical and emotional affair with another man and likely looked more forward to going to work than coming home to share a bed with me. I can't comprehend I did not know about the affair. I just can't. I can't comprehend not so fling much. As I told my wife, had I learned of the affair during those five years, I would have filed for divorce. I would have been in my late 40 seconds and would have moved on. At 64, however, moving on seems so much harder and even scarier. When asked if she was in love with him, her response was I thought I was in love with him, but I wasn't. My true belief is if you think you were in love with a man you were having sex with for five years, then you were in love with him. Period. Be fling honest with me. I won't ask her to be honest with herself because in my heart, I believe she knows the truth. The affair ended in 2009 and it ended only because he retired. It's been just over a month since I learned of the affair, but my wife now tells me she refuses to discuss the affair any longer because it happened long ago and it's too emotionally difficult for her to discuss. WTF. Just like 2004 to 2009, it's apparently all about her needs and wants. I want my marriage to work. I'm just not sure if wanting will be enough, though. I can't imagine growing older feeling the way I've been feeling over the past month. I just don't know how to deal with the depth of her lies, betrayal and deceit. At 64, I'm now at a place I never thought imaginable in a future that seems so uncertain. Hopefully, the IC sessions will help. Sorry for the long rant. The responses to my post were many more than I anticipated. Thank you. A number of replies spoke about children, DNA testing, questioning a likelihood of prior affairs by my wife, notifying both the AP and his spouse. So let me provide some additional information. We have three adult children 43, 38, and 33 and I have no doubt they are mine, so DNA testing is definitely not applicable in this case. I am confident there were no prior affairs. I did write the AP and, no doubt, got my message across. The AP was a very high public official. What I will not do is to notify the AP spouse because I do not want her to feel the pain I've been going through. We went away for a few days and had some very difficult and emotional talks, more than we have in a long time. My wife says she is remorseful because of the hurt she sees it has caused me, but I struggle if she is remorseful for having the affair. As previously mentioned, both my wife and I are an IC and she has been reading books on the infidelity and what she can do to help me, us. I won't make any life-changing decisions until I get more clarity on the affair and more time in IC. My WW has opened up some but shuts down when things get too difficult for her to talk about because, she says, it makes her realize she was that woman and it crushes her to think of the affair and the hurt it has caused. I remind her that the revelation of the affair fling crushes me, really crushes me and that is a result of something she knowingly and repeatedly did over five years. I continue to be on an emotional roller coaster and one whose impact is something I never thought possible. My hope and my wife's hope are that we can successfully work toward our what I know with all certainty is that I can't spend years on this emotional roller coaster. So I'm hopeful I see can give me hope, any hope, that I'll get to a place where it isn't in my face every moment of every day. I know it's going to require a depth of work and, yes, honesty. Once again, thank you. Story 2. A week ago, from today I had a sinking feeling that something was wrong. I did something I thought I would never do. I decided to go through my wife of five and a half years phone. I was stunned to find that she was texting another man whose name was vaguely familiar. As I scrolled through, I found he was asking her things like come back over today, and I want to have sex with you. I confronted my W immediately. She came outside with me to our usual stomping ground for discussions, out back deck over a smoke. She proceeded to lie all about it, saying he was her ex from before I met her 10 years ago. She was only in contact with him because he had a copy of a Sims game she wanted to get. I believed it all, but the next morning I needed to read more of their conversations because something didn't sit right with me. I went on her phone again and found she deleted the texting thread but there was a message from him that morning on FB Messenger. She messaged him after our talk the night before telling him he went through my phone and his response that morning was why did he do that. I started to scroll through more of the conversations and found she was telling him I love you. That was enough for me to know she does not say those words to anyone but me and our two kids. Not even to her parents or friends. I woke her up and asked for the truth. She gave it to me. She had been talking to him for about four months and it had brought back old memories and feelings and evolved into meeting him for lunch dates, walks, and SX. I was devastated. As the weekend went along, we talked. She blocked him on all forms of communication and continued to answer my questions. Granted a lot of her responses were I don't know. She agreed to go to counseling with me and to even start seeing an individual counselor. We have been struggling to get that started though. 
After a few days passed, I asked her to try to find answers to the questions she could not answer and one I am struggling with still is, she believes she still loves me, but is confused how that could be true because of what she did to me, and she still feels she also loves this other man. I am certain I want to work through this and get our marriage back to what it was before her re-entered her life, but I am sick of waiting for her to figure out her feelings. I am the type of person to keep pressing for conversation and answers and she is getting overwhelmed by that. I feel like for my own health I need to keep things moving along, but I feel like I am pushing her away even more as I do. I cannot imagine life without her and how that would work with our two kids. I don't know what to do. The therapist I was able to talk with told me I needed to give her space, but I cannot even fathom that. She is the only one I want to talk to about my feelings and struggles with this, I want her to see it my way. I feel like if I give her space, she might see that as me backing away and conceding to her feelings for this other man. I can tell she is emotionally g struggling some mornings and I want to talk to her, but she gets angry and walls up saying, it's nothing good and is just going to hurt you. I don't know what to do. Thank you all for your words and advice. Some of it is still hard to read, but I will keep checking back and rereading as we continue. I am still wondering now how the advice about living for myself and separating as much as possible physically applies with kids involved. I read the article related to the 180 and was still let without an answer. Examples. We have a wedding for my cousin this month, a festival her father has been running for 25 years. Date my ticket to see Frozen the musical next month. Some tickets to take our son to see a Thomas the Tank Engine live event. Etc. Etc. As of now it feels like the right thing to do is continue as planned with these events since they are for family and our children. But I left unsure if I want to go and pretend nothing is wrong, and certainly I would have no idea if I would even be able to keep it together in front of so many people that I know don't know. So, I wanted to post an update to how I am feeling and what I've been doing. Since I haven't started I see yet, still working on scheduling that, you all have been what is keeping me focused and motivated. I'm not feeling really anything about what has happened. I cried my eyes out, felt the pain, relived it over and over, and now I am to the point where what happened, I can't change it. My whole focus has now been about myself and my kids. I had a slight scare where I checked myself out to the hospital because of my self-deletion thoughts. I got to talk to someone, and I have a plan. I discovered I only loved myself as long as I felt loved by my wife. I was codependent. We both struggled with that and went through therapy while we were dating over six years ago. I thought we had put that past us. Looks like that was not the case. Anyways, I am now 100% focused on changing how I am so that I can love myself no matter the outcome. I'm trying to eat healthier, smoke less, be more of the father figure I set out to be when we had our first child, be the homeowner I set out to be when we bought our house, etc. I've got a list of things I want to do for myself. And I actually feel good about myself regardless of knowing how my W might feel. So, things I've changed in regard to how I am around her, I'm not scheduling things with our kids around her. I'm telling her what I am going to do with them today and letting her initiate if she wants to join or not. I'm not asking her to. Likewise, with all the family events coming up, I am choosing the ones I want to go to. Along with that, if it's an event where it's with her family I plan on telling her that in order for me to feel safe going, I am going to need to tell it her family what is going on. I know you have all said I should tell whoever whenever, but I am not that type of person, I am very private and selective when it comes to my personal life. The other things I am doing is not initiating touch, which admittedly is the hardest for me. That is a huge part of the codependency that I need to learn how to move away from. A struggle I found with my focus on making myself better, I am doing a lot more of the housework that was previously left to her such as dishes and cooking and picking up after the kids. I am worried she is going to see this as me changing for her since it makes her life a little easier. We are not sleeping in the same room anymore either, but I am the one that moved to the couch because we still have an infant in our bedroom that wakes up to nurse throughout the night. I am struggling to know if that was the right decision. Lastly, when it comes to R or D, I am a firm religious believer that D is not ever the first or best choice for a family. This my immediate decision for our marriage is for life and if she doesn't feel that way anymore then she is going to be the one to end the marriage. That's not to say I won't kick her out if things don't change and she doesn't do everything I ask or put in the work to atone for what she had done. I made that clear to her. I guess one more thing. I'm not sure how to discuss these new boundaries I've been trying to hold myself to. I haven't communicated a lot of these decisions to her. Do I need to? Or is letting her feel the change what the goal is? I feel like some of this is working to an extent. She is asking and initiating more of the desire to tag along for family time which our kids love, and they have been so expressive and loving towards both of us. I guess I need help having a boundaries conversation, making it clear that I am not working on her schedule, not initiating touch, and about needing to tell at least someone at an event if it is with people who don't know. I also want to say again that if this persists and my demands of her going to IC are not met then she is going to need to leave. I am at least moving in the right direction here. Like I said, I feel good about myself as of the last day or two, I see that I can be happy with or without her, but still would prefer for her to fix herself and get the help.